In this example video, we are going to look at roller coasters, guys. It's COVID-19 and I'm at home in my room, but we're going to look at roller coasters. So here there are two types of roller coaster. The green one on the left is much more familiar, okay? You will see that the track, oh wait, the car, the trolley, ah yeah, the thing that is moving in a circle is inside the circle. Whereas this one, oh, this is what I found to be called an inverted roller coaster. Fuyo, you look at these people. They are all opposite there. They are like reversed. Okay, so we're going to look at a case where the trolley is traveling this way in a classic loop the loop. So trolley will come up here, go down and travel here. Okay. So we're going to look at this and then we're going to do a bit of extension discussion. What happens when we put the trolley outside the circle? All right, so let's read the question first. Okay, this diagram, this one here on the left, shows part of the track of a roller coaster ride, which a truck, so I presume this is their truck, loops the loop. So move around, loop the loop. When the truck is at the highest position, there is no reaction force. Oh, oh, keyword, if it's multiple ping in your brain, very good. No reaction force between the wheels of the truck and the track, meaning here your N is equal to zero. Okay, the diameter of the loop in the track is 8 meter. Okay, so this is D. I'm not quite sure why they keep using the number 8. Part A. Explain what provides the centripetal force to keep the truck moving in a circle. Okay, so basically, we are only concerning ourselves uh, with the top of the circle. Okay, so a few important information as mentioned just now. Reaction force, no reaction force between the wheels of the truck and the track. Okay, and the diameter is given. So provide centripetal force to keep the truck moving in a circle. Okay, what provides? So centripetal force is again net force. So what constitutes or what makes up the net force? Let's again draw the forces. We will have mg the weight of the trolley or the truck and there is also contact force N. okay so i'm gonna draw that contact force pointing downwards this is n so what provides the centripetal force it will be the resultant very important to mention the word resultant or net force huh? resultant force between resultant force of normal contact force or normal reaction force and and the weight of the trolley And if you want to supplement that with an equation, you can say that your centripetal force is equal to normal force plus mg, which also happens to be your net force lah, or your resultant force. Okay, that is part A. Part B, given that the acceleration of gravity is 9.8, 1, <laughs> calculate the speed of the truck. Okay, so if we know that the no reaction force is between the truck, so I guess I should probably also mention a bit because it's paper 4 and I don't know about you but I'm a bit paranoid after losing a lot of marks as a student. So I make sure I write a bit more. So I will now say on top of the circle or the track the contact force or the normal reaction force N is equal to zero. How I know? Question tell me one. No reaction force between the wheels of the truck and the track. So N is equal to zero. If N is equal to zero, then centripetal force will now be equal to mg. Hence, weight provides, weight alone provides centripetal force. Okay, so I'm guessing that the max is here. Weight provides centripetal force depending on how many marks. Okay, so if this part here is one mark, 
I'm guessing the mark is here. This is just extra things that I write so that later if I restudy or revisit the question, it makes sense to me. The resultant force is actually N plus mg. But mentioned in the question, normal force is zero. If let's say this trolley is moving and the normal force is not zero, then my answer will stop here at this line. Okay, but since the trolley, uh, the question said that the normal contact force is zero, then directly I can write centripetal force is provided by weight. Okay, now part B, we're going to have to calculate the acceler the speed of the truck. So let's say the truck is moving. At this point, it has a tangential speed this way, lah, but it's not like it's going to fly out of the track or anything, but this is the direction of V. So I can say centripetal force which was equal to n plus mg. But n is 0. So centripetal force here will be equal to mg. mv square over r is equal to mg. You can cut. So from here, you will get v square is equal to rg. And we have been here before, Miss Yalo. The equation is the same one. Only depends on the radius. And what is the radius of the circular track? Diameter is 8, so radius will be 4. 4 times 9.81. Okay, I got my calculator. Okay, don't forget to square root. And my answer for V will be 6.26 .26 meter per second. Okay, so... Most of the centripetal forces questions can be quite straightforward if you understand the important skill here is to draw the net force. That way, if they give you some weird scenario that you don't know, you're like, I got you question, I got you circle, I just need to find the center and start taking the direction of the center as positive. And then everything else will proceed from there. Okay, let's look at the second case. Miss, what's the second case? When the trolley is outside the loop, it's like a dome, you know, the trolley is on top. Or like I mentioned just now, there the inverted roller coaster. Hiya. Okay, okay, let's draw that. Okay, so I'm gonna whoa whoa whoa. I did that just now. Shouldn't do that again. I'm gonna redraw this. Rather, I guess I'm just gonna copy this. Push it to the side a bit. And I'm gonna place my trolley on top. Yeah. So no trolley here. Or oh, I put another trolley. I'm going to put the trolley here. Yeah, miss. Can not can not inverted ma. It's trolley outside lo. Hmm. Will the force diagram change? Well, let's see. You see a new scenario? Don't know what to do. Step one, find center of circle. Okay, so basically we got to look at, draw all the forces and decide which one is the net force that provides the centripetal force, the unbalanced force. So obviously we all have our good old MG. So MG is pointing downwards. And it seems like MG can provide centripetal force. Can. And, wait, 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 miss, the wheel is touching the track. So like an object, you know, you know, like normally, I say you put a book, the first, very first example where you, where you encounter contact, normal contact force is you put a book on a table and there's a normal force from the table acting, pushing up on the book. This is your end, right? So because of this, there's also normal force of the track pushing on the trolley. This is N. Right? This is the normal force of the track on the trolley. Where's the direction of FC, yeah, guys? FC is here. Okay, so basically you imagine the trolley is actually on top of the loop, okay? Not inside, but on top. So in this case, right, what is the equation that you would write? Centripetal force is equal to net force. We'll take the direction of centripetal force or net force or the direction of the circle as positive. That's right. So who is positive? Mg, lo. Mg is positive today. Normal is negative. Hmm. So from here, centripetal force will be equal to, or net force will be equal to, mg minus n. Interesting. Okay, let's consider what we have normally done. Number one, what happens when the trolley moves faster? Okay, I know weight is always the same. It's my dude that I can trust, so I'm not really concerned about weight. But I think I want to know if the normal force change, 
based on experience, I know it has to, right? And if it changes, will it increase or decrease? Okay, so let me rearrange. This centripetal force, uh, normal force, will be equal to mg minus centripetal force. Okay, so normal force here is equal to mg minus centripetal force. Let's consider case by case. Okay, so number one, if velocity increases, centripetal force needed increases. But also at the same time, right, actually normal force, it's the pressing of the trolley on the track. Okay, so can normal force be zero? Can. Then the trolley cannot stay in the circle. If I'm teaching a class, I would then say, raise your hand if you didn't see a speed bump and you drive across the speed bump. What happens to your car? Your car fly a bit, right? Your car will not be able to loop this part. Okay, so what I mean is, let's say I'm going to draw a hump here. Dee -dee -dee -dee. My hum is very comical, but you get the point. This is a hemisphere-ish thing. Your car, we <laughs> if your car is too fast, it will go up the hum and then it will go like this before park, fall down again. It cannot go up and follow the bump. If the wheel go up and follow the bump, then it's a smoother ride, lah. I mean, I have countless times forgotten that there's a bump there and just went and got a shock of my life, but this is the case. Law. So if your speed increase, the centripetal force will increase. Okay, centripetal force increase until n equal to zero. Miss, how you know n equal to zero? Okay, okay, I shall show, show the equation. n is equal to mg minus fc, right? So if this number becomes bigger, this number this FC become bigger, then slowly, slowly, it will be equal, your N will be equal to zero. Oh, N will be equal to zero. Yes. So as this number, I'm going to circle, this number increase, the total will decrease. So from here, N decreases until zero. So what this tells us is the wheels of the trolley, as I call this a trolley, la, will lose touch, lose contact, lose contact with the track. So what will happen to the trolley is it will travel here, it will go here and then it will just fly. Cannot keep the circular motion. Okay, let me see if I can draw. Mm. Okay, it's easier to think about this as a hemisphere. Okay, but it's still a sphere. It's a part of a circular motion. So your trolley will be able to travel up here and then after that it will fly this way instead of following the circular track. Makes sense, right? You travel too fast, you will jump. It's like a ramp already. It's not. If you want to follow the circular part, then you have to decrease the speed. That's why speed bumps are there. So you can think of speed bumps. If you can ever drive again because of COVID-19. Joking, joking. Hopefully things will be better soon. Okay, what happens if speed decreases? Let's say you are too slow. You may not be able to go up the hump, right? Because you may not even have enough kinetic energy to compensate the GPE. Okay? But generally, if V decreases, FC will decrease. Right? So from here, you can tell from this equation, N increases. Means N increases forever. No la. N increases until FC equal to zero. This is when V equal to zero. This is when trolley stops. No longer moving already. Because either it loses all its kinetic energy when it's going up the hump, because it will slow down, right? It's going up. Okay? Or if you're if you look at the equation given, 
N is equal to mg minus Fc. So if this Fc becomes smaller and smaller until equal to zero, what will happen to your N? N increases until what's the largest possible value of N? N will be equal to mg. It means this is like the trolley. It's like the trolley is on top and then the normal, it's like our normal, normal force things like, ah, yeah, correct. So if let's say this is your hump, okay, it's like your trolley is up here and the normal force will balance mg, but nobody is moving in a circle. So I don't really know why this question is here, but just so you know, if you slow down too much, eventually when you stop, your normal force will be equal to mg, which are back to case one. Okay, so when we're talking about the inverted roller coaster, which is this one, we actually need to travel at a high, high enough speed to make sure that it has enough speed to go over the loop. Okay, like for example, this one also must travel fast enough. If not all, this thing will slow down and stop because it's losing kinetic energy. Okay, so it needs to have enough speed to be able to loop and it needs to have enough speed such that when it's on top here, things don't fall down. Okay, just like when it's here, if it's too fast, this thing will actually fly on a tangent. Of course, if you look at the track, it's not going to happen now because they clamp it to the side here already. But if it's a normal car on a hump, okay, it's the same thing. Lor. If you drive too fast, you will not, you will, the car will fly. Okay, so this is the difference between whether the trolley is inside, the normal force is pointing downwards versus the trolley being outside, the normal force is pointing upwards. So in this case, something pretty interesting will happen. If you travel too fast, you will begin to slide away. Okay. Or in this case, if you travel faster and faster, the only thing will happen to you is the normal contact force will increase and increase until the wheels break. Because this normal force can theoretically increase until maximum. So until the wheels will break. Okay. But in this case, you can only increase until the limiting factor where the contact force is zero. So please go, don't memorize the force diagram. Always go through the same scenario of determining the center of the circle, drawing the direction of your net force, and then use the equation like what I've done just now to analyze the scenario. What happens when velocity increase? What happens when velocity decrease? Try to see if it makes sense in your head. Okay, so that's it for this example. Outside circle, inside circle, normal roller coaster, inverted roller coaster. All right, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care now.